Hey guys, today I got a 2012 F-150 and this thing's got the 5.0 liter V8. And now what the customer is saying is that he'll be driving and then a message will show up on his dash that says uh, low oil pressure. And so that's why it's here today for us to diagnose that. So I don't want to waste too much time on the preliminary stuff, but I'm just going to give you guys a little info on how I normally deal with this issue because this is fairly common on the 2011 and newer F-150s. Um, really with any engine, EcoBoost or 5.0. The first things first, when you get a code like this, you're gonna want to check the oil level. I know it sounds basic, but you'd be surprised how often a code like this can come up, all because of low oil. So in this case, as you can see, I pulled the dipstick and the oil is full. All right, let's move on from that now that we know that there's actually oil in it. So then the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is just put a scanner on it and check for any codes in the powertrain control module. So. I'm in the powertrain control module right now and there's no fault codes for anything with the oil pressure switch or anything like that. A lot of times there will be a code set like a PO522 or something, but in this case, there's nothing, no codes. Let's move on. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna start it up and you can see the oil gauge is reading. Let me go ahead and drive it and I'm gonna see if I can get it to act up and just verify the customer complaint. All right, so I'm driving it now, so I'm gonna give it a little time and let's see if um, we can get that oil pressure message to pop up. All right, so I've driven this thing around and let it run, but I can't get that low oil pressure message to come on. But I talked to the customer, he said that uh, it happens periodically and he sent me a picture. So let me show you guys uh, what he sent me. So if you see this message pop up right here, there's really only two options. Either the oil pressure is actually low in which case the engine wouldn't even be running. So it has to be option two, which is that the oil pressure switch is bad. So now let's get the truck into the shop and let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. All right, let me show you where the oil pressure switch is located on this thing. Now this truck is four wheel drive. So with that being said, here's the alternator and the oil pressure switch is behind the alternator. So if you come over here and if you look in between the front differential and the rack companion, get a light up in there and get this thing to focus. You can see up in there, you can see the oil pressure switch. Now there's, it's just a single wire connector and this thing actually is leaking oil out of it. That's probably what's tripping it to act up every now and again. Okay, here's a better shot of it. That's it right there, guys. There's the oil pressure switch. Now, if your truck is a two wheel drive version, you could probably just reach up through there and, and undo it. But because the differential's in the way, we're gonna have to pull out the alternator to get to it. Now on the EcoBoost, like on the 3.5 EcoBoost, you can actually get to it from the top. If you take off the, uh, the air hoses going to the turbos, you can actually get to it from the top. But on this engine, there's not a chance. And now because I'll be removing the alternator, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disconnect the battery. So it's just an eight millimeter nut and then pull off one of the battery terminals. It really doesn't matter which one, if you do positive or negative, you just want the battery disconnected. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, we're gonna get the belt off and the alternator and everything, but it's much easier to do it on this truck from the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise it back up in the air and we'll get to it from the bottom. All right, filming up here is gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but I'm gonna do the best I can. I'm gonna take a 15 millimeter uh, ratcheting wrench. I'm gonna put it here on the tensioner. I'm gonna get this belt off right now. I'm just gonna get this belt completely out of the way here. That way it's not bothering me. Now on this year of 5.0s, there's actually two belts. 
So there's still another one back in here that drives the AC compressor and all that, but I'm not gonna worry about that belt. Obviously, we just need to take off the one where the alternator goes. All right, so next, this tensioner has to come off. So you just use a 13. Take it right off. Just one bolt. So with that tensioner off, you can see there's a bolt for the alternator right here. And there's one right up here, right there up on the top. There's just two that have to come off and uh, they're both 15s. Now the other bolt, the upper radiator hose, or the lower radiator hose is in the way. I'm gonna try to get it with the uh, ratcheting wrench. Right, so I got it on there. All right, it's pretty loose now. Okay, now I'm gonna take a pry bar and see if I can pry the alternator out of the way. So I just got one pry bar on top of the alternator and one on the bottom and I'm just kind of wiggling it back and forth until it pops loose. I'm just going to work it off. What a pain, huh? the alternator loose I'm gonna kind of move it out front like this and I just push the radiator hose back out of the way and then bring the alternator out front all right so I've moved the alternator to the front and I haven't disconnected any of the cables on the alternator because I really don't need to because now we can get back in there and get that oil pressure switch. Now you can see it really clearly. All right, so here's the old oil pressure switch that I took out of it. And one thing to be careful of is this little rubber in here. Make sure to get that out because that rubber is actually part of the connector. So it needs to go back in the connector. Go ahead and get that out. When you think of these oil pressure switches leaking, you tend to think that it would leak around here where it screws into the block. And that may be true, but they also tend to leak from down where the connector plugs in. 
oil is able to leak through the sensor internally and get up in here and it uh, gets the connector all oily and then it starts leaking out through there. You can see there's oil down in there. Yeah, so anytime on these uh, oil pressure switches when you start getting oil leaking out through the top part, then the sensor's failed, the switch has failed, and that's it. Time to replace them. All right, so I've gone in with some brake clean and I've uh, cleaned up the connector as best as I can. Just get it all clean. I cleaned it all inside and out. And I don't know if you can see, but I just put back in there that little orange square rubber piece that's supposed to go inside the connector. Hopefully it doesn't fall out before I put the new switch in. All right, so I'm just gonna get it started by hand here. I'm gonna go by hand as much as I can. It's tight. Now the switch, you do not want to over tighten it. So you just wanna go and once you feel like it's starting to get somewhat tight, you pretty much wanna stop. That's probably good right there. Yeah, so I mean, don't don't just keep tightening down on it. I mean, just get it to where most of the threads, you know, with the with the Teflon on it are in there and, and then that's good. I mean, you don't want to put too much force on it. I'll get the connector plugged back in. All right. And that's pretty much it. We gotta get the alternator back on and the belt and then we should be good to go. And it's really hard to find a spot to put the camera but hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna lift it back over here. All right, now something I'm gonna do to make the alternator a little bit easier to install. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna take the bolt for it, stick it back through. and then thread it in thread it into that threaded insert and put it in a few threads keep going okay now once it's in a few threads then you could take a, a hammer and hit the bolt and basically this threaded insert right here you want to push it kind of out toward the back of the alternator and it spreads it open and it, it allows you to to slip the alternator onto the uh, engine easier. All right, let's see if let's see if that's moved enough to make any difference here. I think so. It looks like it's this threaded insert. It looks like it's gotten shoved back in a little bit, so I think we'll be good. Let's see. Yep. Much easier now. Put the bolts back in here. This thing is tight, so let me get that tensioner back on there. And the tensioner, obviously, it's got this little dot on it, so that dot has to go in the little slot. It faces like the five o'clock position, basically. So 
So it goes in that hole right there. the belt back on now. <laughs> All right, that's pretty much it, guys. So I got in the truck and I'm like, why is there no lights coming on? I forgot to put the battery back on, so. Reconnect that. All right, let's start it up and hopefully I don't get a low oil pressure message. So far, so good. All right, everything good so far, guys. If you found the video helpful, please like, comment, subscribe, whatever you guys feel like. I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope it was helpful. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next one.